thank you very much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so how have you been over the last 12 months? Obviously, very, very different times we're living in at the minute. How have you been? How have you found it? Yeah, it definitely has been a lot different, but I've been really fortunate that I've been able to continue doing a lot of what I typically do with um, what I do outside of basketball and continuing to play basketball. So that's really been huge for me to be able to continue doing that. But of course, I'm missing social life and normal life outside of work things. Um, let's let's start kind of from the very beginning. Where where were you born? Where are you from? I'm from Colorado. I live up in the mountains, so about an hour from the main city, and yeah, up in the mountains. Uh, and when did you start playing basketball? What when when did you get the bug? Oh man, from my first memory, I was playing basketball. Both of my older siblings played basketball as well, and my dad coached too. So it was kind of built in the family. So as soon as I could walk, I was pretty much playing with the ball. Would you say kind of your dad was the inspiration then? Did he kind of drive you to, to kind of go as you have uh, kind of to play professional basketball? Yeah, I think a little bit. Him combined with my whole family, just being a very athletic family. And I would always go to my dad coaching my sister, my brother, and I'd always be at the gym. And I was very competitive as a little kid. So I always thought I could play with my brother and sister when I was really little. And it just, it really drove me at that point. And kind of how, if you talk us through your kind of your steps of your career, kind of when did you first join a team? How old were you then? Um, I remember, I think I was in third grade. Um, so for I, the age, I think that was probably like nine. I don't know. I forget. I don't know exactly how old people are in third grade. <laughs> but um, Yeah, I was pretty young, joined a team. Um, I was having to play up because there were there wasn't a team offered for my age group. So I was always playing with girls that were a little older than me, which I really like doing. Um, and then from there, I just went through the typical system of playing with my school and then playing some AU. So a club team did all the traveling stuff through high school. And then I went to the university. Years and went to Florida Atlantic University and finished my college career there. And then I went from there to first Newcastle, did my master's here, and then um, played at Sheffield for a year, Germany for a year, and then now back here. So kind of was obviously playing abroad as well as uh, uh, abroad for us uh, in the UK, kind of how did you find the two, the differences between the two leagues? Yeah, I mean, it, Germany was a great experience. And I think that the biggest difference is, is there is just more of an infrastructure around the league. So like there's a lot more just money in it, to be honest, like there's you're they're able to bring in a lot more imports and um, there's huge crowds at every game, which is really awesome. Um, but in terms of the level of play, some of the teams that we face here and the level of the athletes here, there's it's pretty similar. You just have deeper teams so a roster of 12 girls that are really really strong whereas here you know the rosters are a little bit shorter but it was a great experience playing there so what what brought you back to Newcastle then so it was a little bit a weird off season because COVID hit and I was first going into it thinking that I wasn't wanting to go overseas um, to play during that time because I was a little worried about what that would look like with COVID. Um, and then obviously, since I had been here before, it was a little bit more of a comfortable situation. Um, and my boyfriend, Ramon, he also plays here as well. So it kind of uh, ended up being a perfect situation. I also have my work outside of basketball, my sports psychology work. And so it gave me the opportunity to play basketball still and work on alongside of it. And so at first, I thought I was just going to wait till about Christmas and look at what opportunities I had abroad. But then I decided that this was a better option for me this year, which I'm really happy that I ended up doing because it's been a great, a great year, despite the adversity and ups and downs. Um, you mentioned you played for Sheffield as well. Obviously, they're not in the league this season due to kind of COVID reasons. 
Um, what was your time with them like? It was great. We had a really good team that year and a lot of girls from different places that had played across Europe quite a bit. So we were a very experienced team. We won the cup, which was really fun experience. Um, and then we had a very short roster though. We only had about uh, six players getting a lot of minutes really. So we kind of deteriorated as the season went on, but it was a great group of girls and I, we all still keep in touch. So it was, it was really fun just because of the girls that were on the team. So obviously you've been, you've played for a few different teams in a few different countries and things. What is your kind of favorite moment on, on court? What is your favorite basketball in moment? Oh, Wow. Yeah, that's a tough one. There's been, yeah, there's been so many, but I think even though I've been all these great places, probably high school, my dad was my coach, um, my junior and senior year. And we had some really big games and we made a run in the playoffs and we're a small, small school and stuff. And so for us to kind of, make history by our team pushing that far in the state tournament and doing that with my dad that's probably my favorite basketball memory well I mean I can't imagine being coached by my dad like what was that like like because I, I think you'd be too too hard on me what what was it like for you yeah I, that's usually what people say or kind of how the relationship is but for us, we had such a good working relationship. We had a very similar view on basketball and he really thought of me as the eyes on the court, basically. So he trusted me as a leader and we had a really good collaboration. And it was really fun because we would talk about the scouting report and really go in depth on the teams we were playing and what would be best for our team. But he is just the most supportive person as well as my mom even though she wasn't coaching, but they're just very supportive of everything I was doing and my biggest cheerleaders. So it was always po a positive experience. Um, so kind of outside of basketball, um, what are your kind of motivations? What Obviously, I know you've got the kind of social media page that you, you, you do. What, what, what kind of do you get up to outside of basketball? Well, I just love working out. So that sounds kind of lame, but like, I love being outside, not like hiking around, going to the beach if I'm someplace by the beach, but really just like being outside. I'm from a mountain town. So basically all you can do is get outside and do outdoor activities. So just like having um, those types of activities. Um, and then my sports psychology work, that takes quite a bit of my time as well. Um, and then hanging out with my family. Um, I'm really close to everyone in my family. Um, I have two sisters that are both in Colorado now. So when I'm there, I hang out with them quite a bit and just hang out with friends, family, and my dogs, of course. <laughs> well, you, you're branching out now though, co-commentating on the BBL games. Uh, yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> did, you, did, you, did you enjoy that experience? I loved it. Yeah. It's actually what I studied um, in my undergrad initially. I thought that's what I wanted to do, like multimedia journalism. So it was cool to have that experience again. Um, and it reminded me why I wanted to do that initially. You have to get yourself on Sky Sports for like the, the playoff finals and stuff for the coverage for the WBBL. Yeah, I know. That would be awesome. Definitely would if I had the opportunity to. Uh, so let's talk about this season, uh, obviously with the Eagles. Um, kind of describe to me what, what kind of what it's been like this year, because obviously, as you said before, ups and downs, adversity, injuries. What's it been like being a part of the squad? Yeah, it's felt like we've gone through three different seasons, to mm -hmm. be honest. Like the first game, we were talking about it as a team. Like it felt like forever ago because so much has changed. We've had a lot of injuries, which were really sad. And then people moving on, going to different places. And so it was, it took a long time for us to get any type of consistency. And then it, once we got kind of the group that we are with now, it was about different people stepping up in different roles that they weren't necessarily used to or comfortable with. And I think there's been some games recently where you see people being a little bit more comfortable and taking the reins a little bit more and 
playing with a lot of confidence, which has been great to see because some of the girls were used to being the younger girls. And so now they're really filling that position as a main player. So that's been great to see. And it's, it's a really good group of girls this year, which has been fun. And so despite the adversity that we've had, we've been able to keep a positive mindset, which has been huge because it definitely could have gone down based on how we started the season. Yeah, I think from, from kind of outside looking in, the squad does seem very kind of tight together. Um, was, has it been harder to gel this year because of the COVID restrictions and things, or has, have you managed to, to kind of do it anyway? Yeah, I mean, you always get a little bit close because you have practices together, but you just can't replicate that time away from the court where you're really getting to know each other on a non-basketball level. And so we've definitely missed that. You you, I mean, we, we've gotten close regardless, but I think that we're missing that aspect a lot and we can't wait for it to go back to normal. So we're able to get to gel a little bit more and get to know everyone on the team beyond just on the court. And for you individually, um, you've been putting up some, some huge kind of numbers. There was that 40 point game against Essex and um, kind of how do you feel your individual season's going? I, I think it's been a pretty good individual season. I think it was adapting to what role I needed to play was the biggest challenge, I think. But I went into this season just with the mindset that I'm just thankful to be playing basketball right now, given the state of the world. And so that's taken a lot of pressure off of me this year just to go out and enjoy it every single time. And so being in that relaxed mindset has allowed me to stay positive and just go out and play. And I think that's led me to some good individual performances, but I also think it's now translating to other people feeling more comfortable too. So that's been great as well. Uh, so uh, you played for the Eagles a few years got back. You're back now. You must have some good stories on Chris Bunton. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Too many to count, but you know <laughs> Of course, you know, what happens on the team stays on the team absolutely, for sure. Absolutely. But I think <laughs> I think the main things are just um, our our dynamic with getting him getting technicals is the biggest thing is usually if he, I, he, I see him getting mad and then I get mad at him for getting mad a little bit. So I'm like, Chris, you got to calm down. And so we always laugh about that a little bit because always after the fact, we're able to talk about it. And he's like, oh yeah, maybe you're right. I shouldn't get mad there. And I'm like, yeah, but I also see it's really frustrating. And we kind of come, always come to an understanding, but there's always moments in the game where I'm like, oh, don't get a technical. <laughs> I talked to Chris before the season started and he said that he's got, when he was first coaching, he used to pick up a lot more technicals and he said he was getting better at that. I mean, he, I think there's about three or four, I think he's had so far this season. I do have to say, I have to give him credit. He's done pretty well this year, especially recently um, when we've been in a good flow. He's been able to stay very calm with us. So I have to give him credit on that. And, and obviously, do you, do you enjoy playing uh, kind of with him as the coach? I do. Yeah, I have a great relationship with Chris and we are able to talk off the court about basketball quite a bit. And the best thing with Chris, and I think anyone that knows him knows that he will have your back no matter what. And he's helped me with things beyond basketball quite a bit and other parts of my life and career, um, sports psychology stuff. And mm -hmm. I think that's even bigger than what than just playing for him. So I think the things that he brings and just his care for people is such a big part of it. And it's the things that you remember the most about all your experiences. Okay. So we've talked about the season. Let's get to know your teammates a little bit better then. Who would okay. you say on the team was the best out and out shooter? Oh, you know, I thought you might ask this question and I was one, I was trying to think of who I would say, because sometimes it changes. Maddie's a great shooter. George is a great shooter, but sometimes me and Abby are knocking them down. So I'll say, I'll say Georgia or Maddie. Okay. Uh, who's the best kind of passer who can find that pass that no one else can seem to find? Mm. 
I, I'm going to have to say myself on this because right now I, I get a lot of um, attention. So I'm having to find the dishes right now. Okay. Uh, who's got the worst taste in music? <laughs> oh, man. Well, I'm always in the same bus going down. So I only know like the taste of half the team because that's when we're listening to music. <laughs> but there's a group of... Um, like Rachel and Ruth a little bit and they're really into country and more of that like slower stuff and I just I, that's not my style as much but I understand people really like it so I can't say it's horrible <laughs> um who's the funniest in the dressing room who's who's good to have around uh Abby probably she's uh, always has something going on <laughs> Again, I've talked to uh, Sarah Burkett and uh, Georgia this season uh, at different times, and they both said Abby. Yeah, is just a bit, a bit crazy. She's the character, but it's great that she has a big personality. But it's great, like she's always bringing energy everywhere she goes. Uh, who's who's kind of most likely to forget the plays that you're running? Oh, <laughs> I'm setting man. you up here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. No kidding. Who's <laughs> Mm, you know, that's, that's a rotating, that's on a rotating basis. <laughs> um, you know, people have been doing. Oh, Recently, people are pretty much doing pretty well right now. Oh, I think you froze. I'm sorry. Yeah, it just froze a little bit. We're back, we're back, we're back. Okay. <laughs> Um, so we've got one shot left and we need a couple of points to win the game. Who's taking that last shot? That's me for sure. But then I'm putting Georgia and Maddie and Abby on the wing. So I have them to kick it out if, okay. if they all collapse. <laughs> right. Some questions just about yourself then. Some quick fire questions, like either or answers. Um, nice and easy, these ones. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> At Starbucks or Costa? Ooh, Starbucks. Uh, what is your favorite Netflix series at the moment? Oh, um, I'm watching the one right now. It's not my favorite, but that's the only one that I'm watching right now. Well, I don't think I've heard of that one. Everyone seems it's to watch just completely different things to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's new. Right. Um, ooh, next. McDonald's or KFC or none? Oh, none. If I can oh. avoid fast food, oh, definitely avoiding it. Uh, what's your favorite Disney film, if you have one? Oh, I don't think I have a standout favorite. I like them all, but probably um, Up with, no, that's Pixar. Is that the same? Uh, that, 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 I'll count. That's Disney Pixar. They're all, okay. All, uh, yeah, yeah. Probably actually, if you include Pixar, the um, Soul that just came oh, the out. Oh, new one, yeah, 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 yeah. Love it. I recommend that to everyone. That was an amazing. <laughs> oh, we'll keep freezing. What's going on? I think are we back? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Okay. Oh, lastly, the the kind of most important question: Would you have pineapple on a pizza? No, 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 no. <laughs> They're great separate. They don't go together. <laughs> it's funny how strong opinions people have on the, the, the pineapple on a pizza. Donut. <laughs> I find it funny. But no, Alison, I really appreciate your time. Thank you for coming out to talk to me. It's been fascinating to hear, kind of get to know you better and hear more about your career. Um, Thank you. So what? just just before you go, uh, is Essex next, I think, on the, the weekend? Yes. How, how do you see that match up uh, Go on, because we, we've we've lost to Essex Lane once this season. How how do you fight? How do you see that going? Yeah, that I, I feel pretty confident with that one. Um, we match up pretty well against them, and the first time we played them, we basically were just transitioning to our new setup with our team, and so I think now we've gotten a little bit more comfortable, and it's definitely a game that we can win. So we're feeling confident going into it. Amazing. Well, good luck for the rest of the season, and. Uh, Let's see if you can win some more Eva's Play of the Week awards. So Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. I'll speak to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.